And welcome back. My name is Corbin White, and here is your news, sports news for the day. Cougar basketball is just a couple months away. WSUCougars.com recently released the schedule for the upcoming season. The season begins at Beasley Coliseum on November 7th as the Cougs take on Seattle University. The two teams met last year in Seattle. The Cougs lost that game 69-78. Pac-12 play will begin the first week of January when USC and UCLA come to Pullman. The Huskies visit on Sunday, February 9th. Kyle Smith is replacing Ernie Kent at head coach this season, and he'll have returning sophomore C.J. Ellaby in the rotation along with a handful of newcomers. The Mariners lost 11-5 last night to the Cincinnati Reds, but it wasn't a complete loss. Kyle Lewis became the second player in Major League history to hit a home run in each of the first three games of his career. Lewis has been a highly touted prospect in the Mariners organization since he was selected 11th overall in 2016. The Mariners play the White Sox tonight at T-Mobile Park. WSU soccer at home this weekend. The Cougs are playing the Michigan Wolverines on Friday and the Loyola Marymount Lions on Sunday at the lower soccer field in Pullman. The Cougars have won their first four games of the season. WSU head coach Todd Schulenberger told the Daily Evergreen, we're fit, we're hungry, we're ready for the 180 plus minutes of soccer this weekend. Cougs versus Cougs tonight. Cougar football Saturday was bumped up this Friday, or this, uh, up to this Friday this week, and Mike Leach's Cougs are down in Texas for the last game before Pac-12 play begins. WSU's Cougars, who are 2-0, are facing off against the Houston Cougars, who are 1-1. The game is in Houston tonight at the same stadium the NFL's Houston Texans play in. WSU's head coach Mike Leach has this to say about tonight's game. They run it more than they throw it. They have uh, quite a bit of speed out there at a number of positions, including the quarterback, uh, who's a very quick guy. The Cougars were 5-1 and one on, uh, on the road last season. Angels two-way sensation Shohei Otani is out for the rest of the season. ESPN reports Otani will undergo knee surgery to repair a rare congenital condition. Otani says he felt discomfort as he continued to ramp up his bullpen sessions in recent weeks. Otani has not pitched since last year, being limited to a designated hitter this season after undergoing Tommy John surgery over the offseason. The Angels hope Otani can finish his throwing program later this fall. Those aren't the only competitions for Cougs to, to, follow, this, to follow this weekend. A regional report, a regional, report, regional eSports event is coming to Pullman on Saturday. Logan Plant has more on this weekend's Super Smash Brothers tournament. Tonight, a pro-life demonstration causes controversy on campus. And Goddard Minshew's return to Pullman, where you can catch the quarterback this Saturday. Morrow News 8 starts now. From the Northwest. Good evening, I'm Corbin White. And I'm Kevin Gonzalez. Welcome to Murray News 8. A pro-life demonstration is going on outside of Bryan Hall on the Washington State University campus today. KLEW says the Center for Biological Reform created the massive structure that's been churning heads. The structure features pictures of allegedly aborted fetuses and photos from the Holocaust. We talked with a staff member from the group who says the goal of the structure is to get students' attention that will ultimately lead to a conversation about abortion. A WSU engineering professor was injured in a car crash and hospitalized at the Sacred Heart Medical Center on Sunday. The Washington State Patrol says Hussein M. Zabib was driving west on State Route 270 without wearing a seatbelt and hit the wall near Sunshine Road. Zabib's condition was critical at 2 p.m. on Sunday, and there's not yet an update on his condition. The reconstruction project on West A and North Line streets will cost nearly $1 million more than expected. Moscow Pullman Daily News says the Moscow City Council agreed Monday night to fund the project near the Wells Fargo ATM. New sidewalks will be poured and, cir and Circle Drive will be converted to a cul-de-sac. Sewer and water upgrades will also be installed. General Mills is recalling their five pound bags of gold metal flour after they found E. coli in one of their bags. Bags labeled best if used by September 6th, 2020 are being recalled. 
If you have any questions about your bag of gold meal flour, call 1-800-230-8103. When we come back, current and former WCU quarterbacks made headlines over the weekend. Molly Santos is up next with our sports report. When Murrow News 8 continues. <laughs> next fall starts next week. Celeste Harms will tell us if the sunshine is on the way out. When Murrow News 8 returns. And welcome back to Murrow News 8. We're going to toss it over to the Weather Center with Celeste. Celeste, what do you have for us? Thanks, Corbin. Thank you for watching tonight. Be sure to watch our live newscasts at nwpb.org slash mn8 and on cable late at 7 and 10. Don't forget, you can also follow Murrow News 8 on Facebook and Twitter. Have a good night. I heard we'll have some snow in September. Corbin, is that true? I won't be telling you anything until the end of the weather broadcast, Sean. you got to hang on for that. Today, the high was 69 and the low is going to be 44 degrees. Let's take a look at tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're looking at a high of 66 and a low of 49. I want to move on over to the Washington State map next. As you can see over on the west side, I'm over, over in Olympia, we have a high of 69 degrees, a low of 50. And then over in Seattle, we have a high of 68 today and a low of 53. Move on over to the middle of Washington State. We have a high of 76 and a low of 45 in Yakima. And then over in the Tri-Cities, a low of 50 and a high of 82, which is fantastic. We're not there to enjoy it, unfortunately, but that's the high. And then over here, over in Spokane, we have a high of 71 and a low of 44. And in Pullman, just to reiterate, a low of 44 today and a high of 69. Let's take a look at that five-day forecast. Thursday, we're going to get some rain, a little rain tomorrow. Friday, we're going to get some partly cloudy weather. And over on Saturday, we're going to see some rain and partly cloudy weather. But as a matter of fact, according to the National Weather Service, Spokane has a slight chance of rain and snow Saturday night and Sunday morning. We're seeing some lower temperatures in Pullman this weekend. So since we're not too far away from Spokane, there's a chance we may see some snow too. Back to you at the desk. Tonight, we have an update on the President Trump uh, investigation and the release transcripts. More on this controversy. And a shooting at a Portland airport this morning. Murrow News 8 starts now. Good evening, I'm Celeste Harms. And I'm Corbin White. Welcome to Murrow News 8. According to NBC News, a person was injured in a shooting earlier, early this morning at Portland International Airport today. Kama Simmons, Port of, uh, Port of Portland Police Department said to NBC News that the shooting was ha happened outside of a baggage claim area. Currently, the person was not, has not been identified and was taken to a hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Addiction Training Center director says young people need to know vaping is risky. According to Moscow Pullman Daily News, Stephen Meyer, who is also an associate professor at U of I, says due to poor regulation, vape juice, juices contain chemicals that are known to be harmful. Meyer says e-cigs ought to be regulated like other tobacco products. He says advertising should also be regulated and flavored e-cig juice should be, should be banned. Meyer says parents and kids need to know much more about these products. A recent division between Kappa Sigma and the governing IFC body has led to the fraternity's loss of university recognition. But the fraternity, the fraternity will stay on Greek Row. Reporter Andrew Baderlin reports on what that means for the WSU chapter. The Lauren McCluskey Foundation will host its first events in Pullman starting next week. Jill and Matt McCluskey are faculty members at WSU. Their daughter, a University of Utah student, was murdered on the school's campus last year. On October 5th, there will be a 5K race for campus safety in Pullman and a dinner fundraiser late that evening. According to Moscow Pullman Daily News, the foundation supports campus safety, amateur athletics, and animal welfare in McCluskey's memory. The clothing bank is now open. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not. Oh, the Academic Success and Career Center is accepting clothing donations weekends from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. In the Lighty Building, ASCC is looking for professional attire. They accept new and used clothing. Students do not have to give back clothing they take from the donation closet. An ASCC spokesman said students should not feel embarrassed 
using this resource. That's the Cougar Closet. When we come back, Kevin has all of your sports stories, including an intriguing story on an interesting nationwide trend. That's when Murrow News 8 returns. Thanks, John. The Guardian says active duty military suicides are at a record high, and Pentagon officials say they're struggling to stop it. They say the Pentagon reported a rise in Navy, Army, Marine Corps, and National Guard suicides. The Air Force is the only one that has gone down. The Guardian quoted U.S. Defense Secretary Mike or Mark Esper saying, quote, I wish I could tell you we have an answer to prevent further or future further suicides. Esper says, we are caught in a national epi epidemic of youth suicides. When we come back, a new voice will be coming to your Amazon Alexa, and it's sure to get your attention. We'll be back with that story after the break. Jennifer Lopez and Shakira are headlining the Super Bowl halftime show. The duo took to Instagram, or took to Instagram and Twitter yesterday to announce the news. Both singers expressed their excitement and their desire to represent Latinos and Latinas. The Super Bowl is set for Sunday, February 7th in Miami. Well, I know I'm personally really excited about this. One, they're both female powerhouses and really well known in the music industry. Two, they're phenomenal dancers, so it should be a great show. And I also think it's really great for representation. Yeah, I, I know they're both like great performers on their own, so having them at the same time should be a really good time. Absolutely. Well, Spider-Man is back in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We'll talk about that when Murrow News 8 comes back. Well, last year, Pullman went freak o freak -o for our own con Uncle Rico. Gardner Minshew and his mustache uh, tore across the Palouse in a fury of fame last year, but now it's Jacksonville's turn for the fun. Many Minshew fans had their dreams come true when Minshew met the real Uncle Rico. Actor John Grease showed up to a Jaguar Jaguars practice dressed in full costume to meet his doppelganger. Grease was in town shooting a commercial for the NFL Network, which I'm sure will turn into something special. Here's to the man, the myth, and the mustache. Well, I know both of those are really exciting stories for us personally in Pullman and Spider-Man for the entire world. Kevin, you're a big Spider-Man fan, Yeah, player, I right? love Spider-Man. I'm super excited to see Tom Holland come back to the MCU. And also, Sony's still planning to do the whole uh, Spider-Man connected universe, bringing in Venom. Um, and just seeing how Spider-Man will continue to grow in the MCU. What do you think, Corbin? I, I love Spider-Man so much, honestly. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm super excited about it. And also the Gardner Minshew photo. I didn't know that was the actual actor playing Uncle Rico. I didn't know that was him. I thought it was somebody dressed up as him. All right, well, thank you for watching tonight. And be sure to watch our live newscasts at nwpb.org slash MN8 and on Cable 8 at 7 and 10. And don't forget, you can also follow Murrow News 8 on Facebook and Twitter. Have a good night. Tonight, the new connection between President Trump and Nickelback. And a price increase on Google Gold. Find out how much you will have to pay for a can of cheese. Mara News 8 starts now. Good evening, I'm Corbin White. And I'm John Lee. Welcome to Moral News 8. Look at this photograph. President Donald Trump tweeted that along with a video that contained copyrighted music. Look at this photograph. The photograph played behind the video that contained a photograph of Democratic frontrunner Joe Biden on a golf course. According to CNN, Warner Music Incorporated filed the complaint. According to The Guardian, Biden was accompanied by his son, Hunter, and a, quote, Ukrainian gas exec named Devin Archer in this picture. The tweet still exists, but the video could not be played. A USA Today poll says 38 to 45 percent of Americans want President Donald Trump impeached over the alleged phone call with the Ukrainian president. USA Today polled over 1,000 adults Tuesday. 35 to 44 percent of those polled think Trump should be removed from office and convicted. Trump claims the call he had was, was quote, perfect and thinks the impeachment inquiry is a, quote, hoax. Twelve teams of finalists will, will present tonight in the Adobe Creative Jam competition. The project opened in September and students teamed up to create an app using critical thinking problem 
or critical thinking, problem solving skills, and digital literacy skills. Prizes will be awarded from Adobe, who helped mentor teams along the way. The Wall Street Journal reported today that more than 40 Sports Illustrated employees will lose their jobs, some as early as today. Seattle-based company The Maven, who owns the license of Sports Illustrated, is planning on hiring nearly 200 contract workers to cover sports. A number of Sports Illustrated employees signed a petition to executives at the company. The petition stated, quote, the Maven wants to replace top journalists in the industry with a network of Maven freelancers and blog bloggers. And we'll be back after the break. Next, is it raining the cars for this weekend? Your forecast is, is next on Brown News. Free diabetes, one in three. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother. Sean O'Connor is in our weather center. What's this weekend looking like, Sean? Thank you, Sean. When we come back, find out about UPS and their new method of delivery. When Moral News 8 continues. 12.1 million dollars, the price of a piece of artwork from a street artist. The painting devolved parliament by world, fam by world famous street artist Banksy sold in London today for the astonishing price, placing Banksy in the ranks of some of the most elite artists in the world. Many consider this high price tag to be an anticlimactic ending to the saga of the pe uh, painting after a Banksy painting sold last year for $1.4 million and then immediately shredded itself. Thank you for watching tonight. Be sure to watch our live newscasts at nwpb.org slash mn8 and on cable late at 7 and 10. Don't forget, you can also follow Moral News 8 on Facebook and Twitter. WSU's women's soccer took a loss at home last night against the University of Arizona. After two hours and 14 minutes, the game ended 1-0. U of A's Kelsey Cavara was the only one to score. Haley Pearson had one assist, and Hope Heisey had four saves. WSU's Ella Diederick got three saves. Wazoo has nine wins under their belt and three losses. The Wazoo football team is heading down to Arizona to play against the Arizona State Sun Devils. The game is tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Here's what the head coach, Mike Leach, has to say about the Devils. They feel good about their defensive line. They do play off you, but then in certain situations, they're very aggressive. They play man. Uh, they blitz more than Utah does. The Cougs are 3-2, and two, and ASU is 4-1. We're going to toss it over to the weather center, Logan. With uh, sorry about that, Logan Plant. What kind of weather are the Cougs in for in Arizona? Hey, thanks, Corbin. Thank you, Logan. The WSU volleyball team returns to Bowler Gym for the first time since knocking off the number eight Washington two weeks ago. Joining us live from Bowler Gym is John Lee. Hey, John. Back to you, Mr. Light. That's John Lee reporting live from Bowler Gymnasium. Thanks, John. Cougar Falls sports are well underway. Sean O'Connor visited a lesser known sports team here in Pullman, the rugby team. The MLB League Championship Series kicks off this weekend in the National League. The Washington Nationals are facing off against the St. Louis Cardinals right now. The Houston Astros advanced to the ALCS last night after defeating the Tampa Bay Rays 6-1. Garrett Cole was dominant for the Strohs last night, pitching eight innings and striking out ten. The Astros will battle the New York Yankees tomorrow night in Houston for Game 1. The WNBA's Washington Mystics have won their first championship in franchise history. The Mystics scored 89 points last night against Connecticut Sun. This is two-time MVP Alana Deladon's first WNBA title. She scored 21 points despite her herniated disc. The final score was 89 to 78. That's today's sports news. Murrow News 8 has your weather with Logan Plant next. Stick around. Well, what a cute pup. 
Thank you so much for watching Maroon News 8 tonight. And be sure to watch our live newscasts at nwpb.org slash mn8 and on Cable 8 at 7 and 10. Don't forget, you could also follow Maroon News 8 on Facebook and Twitter. A WCO student was arrested today. Join us live from College Hill. Hey Corbin, what happened over there? Well, Kevin, actually a Wazoo student was arrested on Saturday, as a matter of fact. A Wazoo student pushed a couple out of a window, and not just any window. It's actually the house, the window at the house right behind me here around the corner. And so the couple that fell out through the window, I'm gonna take this side. <laughs> the couple that fell through the window, they're, they're, they're treated for non-life-threatening injuries, they're okay. But the person who pushed him out of the window, his name was Joel Hargan, a 21-year-old. And KXLY found out from the local police that the, uh, Joel Hargan and one of the victims were actually roommates. Now, Joel Hargan, or Hargan, was booked in Whitman County Jail and is expected in court Monday. But again, this arrest happened on Saturday, and we're just hearing updates now. So, back to you at the desk. Thank you, Corbin. Tonight, why Pullman Regional Hospital received a grant of over a million dollars. And why traveling from Pullman to Seattle just got a little easier. Where our news eight starts now. Good evening, I'm Corbin White. And I'm Logan Plant. Welcome to Murrow News 8. The Coalition for Women Students did their annual Take Back the Night March thir or, or yeah, excuse me, Night March Thursday. CRNJ.wsu.edu says this is the coalition's chance to unify against quote all power-based personal violence. A poetry slam featuring victims of violence was held before the event. They urged listeners to advocate for those be still being victimized. They marched through the cold chanting yes means yes and no means no all over campus. Once they reached Beasley Coliseum, they ended their march and held a brief candlelight vigil for everyone affected by violence. Alaska Airlines has added another flight from Pullman to Seattle. KXLY reporters reports that Pullman Moscow Regional Airport's fifth flight to the Emerald City will begin on November 6th, just a few weeks after the airport reopened with the new runway and instrument landing system. The airport was closed through most of September and early October for construction, but it is now fully operational. Football is back in Pullman for homecoming. Sean O'Connor joins us outside live from Martin Stadium. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Sean. The Trump administration is considering a proposal which would cause half a million children to lose eligibility for free school lunches. The change would tighten eligibility for the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, known as SNAP. Nearly 3 million people could lose access to food stamps, according to CBS. On a local level, this would affect the almost 60% of Spokane public school students who get free or reduced price lunches. According to KXLY, along with the 25% of Pullman High School students who currently qualify for the SNAP program. A man is under arrest after allegedly trying to steal a car. KHQ reports that a 39-year-old Wayne Melgren, who is also a five-time convicted felon, tried to steal a Mercedes at 3 a.m. Thursday morning. Police say a witness saw Melgren entering the car at Northtown Auto Liquidators in Spokane and, alter and alerted authorities. Police say that before this crime, Melgren was recently released from custody after attempting to steal a car from the same dealership. When we come back, we'll let you know more about the football game that everyone's coming into town. Your sports update after the break. Thanks, Malou. Sometimes it's difficult for men to find a place to shop for clothes on the Palouse. Logan Plant went down to a new store in Pullman that's trying to fill this need. Now, Corbin, are you planning to head on out to Haunted Palouse this weekend? That's a big maybe because I'm a little scared. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've gone to a couple of, like, scary houses, or some haunted house things before, you know, where you go in and there's all the actors and they're just hiding around corners and jumping out at you last minute. I mean, like, it's fun. It's an adrenaline rush. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I don't know if I want that adrenaline rush right now. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not for me. I'm more of a corn maze guy myself. The scavenger hunts over on the west side, they have a corn maze shaped like the state of Washington. That oh. one's a really good time. I've been to that a couple times. Right, but there's actually one right next to where I grew up. Um, the Smith, Smith Brothers Farm, actually. Mm. And so, well, and let's uh, let's actually wrap it up. Let's go to the next uh, next part here. When we come back to, when we come back to Woman Made History in Space today. 
That story when Murrow News 8 returns. NASA conducted the first all-female spacewalk in history today, outside of the International Space Station. The spacewalk officially began this morning at 4.38 Pacific Time. Astronauts Jessica Meyer and uh, uh, Christina Koch were tasked with replacing a faculty ba or fac faulty battery that failed to at activate after a spacewalk last week. According to NASA, this is the second attempt for an all-female spacewalk. The first one was scrapped in March because of a lack of properly fitting spacesuits for both Koch and Meyer. The Carson College of Business just made an important addition to help students with their first impressions and their confidence. Murrow News 8 reporter Jane McDonald shares more. Chances are you've had to swat through swarms of bugs recently. Maybe you accidentally swallow one. Those pesky buggers are called aphids. Normally, they hide in trees and feed off their roots, but right now it's their migrating season and mating season. As much as they might be annoying, they won't do any harm, and experts say as the weather gets colder, they'll head on their way. So. Logan, I've been seeing these things around, and honestly, I thought it was just me <laughs> I was hallucinating. No, it wasn't just you. They were everywhere around campus earlier this week. I went out to dinner that night, came out of the restaurant, and the place was just swarming with them in the parking lot. I thought it was like, I don't know, like some kind of leaf or pollen or something. I'm like, oh, it is this. I get it off my shirt, and I'm like, oh, that is a bug. Yeah, that, that <laughs> it even looks like snow a little bit at first when you first see it. The worst kind is snow. It's so sad, you know. It's just... Uh, well, we're going to come back, back now. Oh my goodness. When we come back, how WSU plans to become one of the nation's top 25 public research universities by 2030. We'll be right back. The university is striving for great improvements and national recognition in the coming years. Murrow News 8 reporter John Lee shares the most recent plans to achieve this. Thank you for watching tonight. Be sure to watch our live newscasts at nwpb.org slash mn8 and on cable 8 at 7 and 10. And don't forget you can also follow Murrow News 8 on Facebook and Twitter. Have a good night. The Washington State Cougars are going to Oregon this weekend. The Oregon Ducks have six wins and one loss and the Cougs have four wins and three losses. Here's what Cougar head coach Mike Leach has to say about the Oregon Ducks quarterback Justin Herbert. I just think he's talented, you know, I think he's a talented guy, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased we have ours instead. The game is on Saturday at 7.30 p.m. The New York Giants signed former WSU linebacker Dayone Buchanan this afternoon. Buchanan was a first round pick in the 2014 draft by the Arizona Cardinals. He also spent time as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Golden State Warriors head coach Steve Kerr told NBC Sports Bay Area that former WSU star Clay Thompson is unlikely to play this season. Clay tore his ACLL in Game 6, six of, of last year's NBA Finals. The Warriors start their season Thursday against the LA Clippers. The Houston Astros and Washington Nationals face off in Game 1 of the World Series tonight. The Astros ended up winning the ALCS in Game 6 on Saturday. But not before the Yankees extended the series by winning Game 5. Justin Verlander continued to struggle in, in el 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 elimination games, giving up a home run to Aaron Hicks. Former Mariner James Paxton dealt for the Yanks, striking out the side here. The next, the next night, Astros trying to close out the series in Game 6. DJ LeMayhew had other ideas. Launching, the, launching this one to tie it up in the ninth bottom of the, bottom of the inning. Jose Al, Altuve is the hero for the Astros, sending this one to deep left center field. And the Astros to their world, second World Series in three years. Game one of the Fall Classic features a fantastic pitching matchup. Garrett Cole versus Max Scherzer. According to CougCenter.com, the WSU volleyball team fell from rank 21 to 24 Monday in the American Volleyball Coaches Association poll. The volleyball team is now 16 and 4. They are playing the Colorado Buffaloes on their turf Thursday at 6 p.m. The new NBA season begins tonight. The Raptors begin their title defense against the New Orleans Pelicans in Toronto. 
while Anthony Davis debuts with the Los Angeles Lakers as they take on, as they take on the new look LA Clippers. Look out for WSU alum Robert Franks, who is on the Charlotte Hornets roster this season as a two-way player. Tonight, water levels continue to fall in the aquifer that serves Palouse. Find out what people are doing to help. And a certain WSU dorm is holding their annual haunted house. We'll tell you where to go for a good scare. Mara News 8 starts now. From the Northwest. Good evening, I'm Corbin White. And I'm Sean O'Connor. Welcome to Moro News 8. A Moscow man was arrested last night after allegedly leading police on three high-speed chases. Moscow police captain uh, Will Kraslet told Moscow Pullman Daily News the suspect was spotted in a Walmart parking lot before allegedly fleeing. The man was eventually arrested on suspicion of eluding a police officer, aggravated assault, receiving or transferring a stolen vehicle, and felony warrants for domestic battery and felony imprisonment. He was taken to the Lataw County Jail, Lataw County Jail in Moscow after going to Gripman Medical Center. WSU Eggert Family Organic Farm holds the annual Fall Harvest Festival organized by students in WSU's organic agricultural major. According to KHK, KHQ, a police pursuit in West Central Spokane sent three people to the hospital. The person being chased crashed into a car coming the opposite direction, spun out, and smashed into two parked cars. Firefighters used the jaws of life to get people out of the cars that were badly damaged. KHQ says the driver and two others were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. And the police told them the driver is being charged with vehic vehicular assault and eluding law enforcement. Washington State University held their 10th annual Inquiry Symposium Monday. I went to the Elson S. Floyd Cultural Center to learn what gender and sexuality students have been up to. Over in the Elson S. Floyd Cultural Center, students take their seats for the Inquiry Symposium. The Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies Program and other departments on campus worked together to provide a space for students to share their findings on gender and sexuality research. It's really to highlight our undergraduate and graduate student work around LGBTQ needs, research, and or queer theory and feminist theory. Students talked about the importance of Tumblr to the queer community, how disabled people are desexualized in the media, and mental health among LGBTQ individuals. Additionally, we get to bring in a really great speaker, at least we have the past couple of years. Leah Lakshmi Piepsna Samarasina was this year's speaker. Piepsna Samarasina is a poet, writer, and social activist. Piepsna Samarasina talked about destigmatizing disabled people and empowering LGBTQ individuals. The Inquiry Symposium has been held annually for the last 10 years. All students are welcome to attend the symposiums, and students from all majors can submit work. It's not just folks who are in you know, comparative ethnic studies or women's gender and sexuality studies who are doing LGBT work. Corbin White, Murrow News 8. Coming up next, Celeste Harms will give you the inside scoop on all the big sports headlines. All that when Murrow News 8 returns. Thank you, Celeste. More winter weather on the way? Well, I sure hope so. We'll find out after the break as Gunnar Peterson has this weekend's forecast next. Pullman's newest school unveiled a unique piece of art. Kevin Gonzalez has more on what makes this art unique. When we come back, find out how the state of Washington is planning to help sexual assault victims. That story, when we return. Washington State has received $2.5 million to fund the Sexual Assault Kit Initiative. According to the Attorney General's office, these kits are used to acquire evidence of sexual assault from survivors. They say the money will fund a new effort to add DNA profiles of thousands of convicted offenders across Washington. They say the official, they say the office will use the remaining $1.5 million to test backlogged kits, train law enforcement, and hire more personnel to support the team behind the initiative. Orton's Haunted Hall is back for Hollow Week at WSU. This year, the theme is It and All Their Friends. 
Particip participants will be put into groups and taken to the 12th floor of the Orton Hall and lead Georgie away from Pennywise's lair. In his lair, you will see many familiar faces from across the horror movie genre. The haunting of Orton takes place tonight and tomorrow night. The cost to get in is, is $1 and non-perishable food item, and one non-perishable food item. The food will be donated to Ros Rosario's Place, the food bank at WSU's Women's Center. Big things are coming for the WSU baseball team. Find out more about the team's big project coming up next when Murrow News 8 returns. According to Moscow Pullman Daily News, a variety of Halloween events are scheduled on the region. In Pullman, a planetarium show, Haunted Skies, is set for 7 p.m. Friday and 5 p.m. Sunday at WSU's planetarium, Sloan Hall, room 231. That's where it's going to be. In Moscow, Rocky Horror Picture Show will show at 9 p.m. and 11.59 p.m. Today and Saturday at the Ken, Ken Wardy Performing Arts Center, 508 South Main Street. Humane Society of the Palouse and Moscow Ale House will host a howl o -ween event from 2 to 6 p.m. Sunday at the Lataw County Fairgrounds and Event Center, uh, 1021 Herald Street, Moscow. So, do any, is it, any of those events sound interesting to you guys? Oh, there's I guess, a variety of events. I've never been a really big Halloween person, but there's a lot of options for people that are in the celebrating Halloween. Celeste, how about you? I will agree. I'm personally a bit of a scaredy cat, so I kind of stay clear of those <laughs> events, but um, I respect and appreciate the people that do attend. <laughs> no, I'm definitely going to check out the Orton Hall Haunted House. That sounds that sounds really cool. I, I didn't even know they had a haunted house on campus. There you go. Yeah, I mean, it's only a dollar. Bring a can of food. Absolutely. I mean, why not? It goes towards why, a good cause. Why not test it out? I love Halloween. It's like, it's like one of my favorite holidays. Sounds like a great plan to support a good cause. All right, well, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, be sure to watch our live newscasts at nwpb.org slash nn8 and on cable 8 at 7 and 10. Don't forget, you can also follow Murrow News 8 on Facebook and Twitter. Have a good night. Tonight, WSU is searching for its new provost. Find out about the committee and the process. And learn about keeping your trick-or-treaters safe tonight. Murrow News 8 starts right now. Good evening and a happy Halloween to you from all of us here at the studio. I'm Gunnar Peterson. And I'm Corbin White. Welcome to Mirror News 8. WSU Insider reports a team has been assembled to pick the WSU's new provost. The committee is made up of students, student reps, faculty, and staff. There are 15 members total. They said their goal is to choose a new provost by the end of spring semester. The committee is holding a listening session Monday, November 18th in the Cub Junior Ballroom. Spokane police say an officer was hurt after his car was hit from behind by a driver distracted with her cell phone. Spokane police tell KHQ that the officer was stopped behind a van when the, when the distracted driver hit the back of the officer's patrol car and pushed it forward into the van. The patrol car appears to be totaled. Police say the officer was taken to the hospital for treatment for back pain, back and neck pain. He was since he has since been released. Krem reports a district judge has sentenced a man to at least three years in prison after he pleaded guilty to lighting his girlfriend on fire last year. 38 year old Dustin Hieronymus lit his girlfriend on fire on Valentine's Day last year. Krem reports Hieronymus can be facing 10 years total for the entire domestic battery charge. Well, today is Halloween, and with that comes one of the most beloved traditions, trick or treating. Treating. <laughs> Joining us live from the WSU President's House is Celeste Harms. Hey, Celeste, how are those Halloween festivities going? Dogs are staying warm out there. Celeste, thank you very much. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg says that his company will continue to run political ads. Zuckerberg says Facebook does not have a department that separates real ads from fake ones on the social network. Zuckerberg says that Facebook was founded to give people a voice and free expression. He also said that political ads are newsworthy. When we come back, the baseball season came to an end last night. Well, Lou Santos has some historic facts from this year's World Series when Murrow News 8 returns. And next, Sean O'Connor will share what the weather has in store for trick-or-treaters tonight. Your forecast when Murrow News 8 returns.
Well, thanks, Sean. Uh, coming up, someone decided to play the part of a thief this Halloween season. You're not going to want to miss this next story. Too. Stay tuned in to Maroney's 8. Now, thanks, everybody, for watching. We hope you have a good Halloween tonight uh, from all of us here at the studio. Stay safe out there, and thank you again for watching Maroney's 8. Good night. It is pretty cold out there still there, John. As a matter of fact, it's uh, the low today is going to be 27 degrees. Yeah, very warm. I'm being sarcastic, of course. The high is 45 degrees. Let's take a look at tomorrow's weather. Tomorrow is going to be a high of 48 degrees and a low of 30, basically the same as tonight. We know the drill. Wear gloves, wear jackets. Let's move on to the Washington State map. Let's see what's going on on the west side here. On the west side, over in Olympia, it's a little... The high is higher than it is here, but it's still pretty much cold. High of 56 and a low of 33. Seattle, about the same, 54 and 38. Over in Yakima, 23 is the low, 51 is the high. Over here in the Tri-Cities, 52 is the high and the low is 24. Sound familiar? Very cold in this whole state of ours. And it's Spokane, the low is 24 and the high is 45. Let's take a look at that five-day forecast. So, I'm going to start on this side. Over uh, today, or, uh, let's see, my day's mixed up here. Tomorrow is going to be a, a high of 48 degrees, a low of 30. Sunday is going to be a high of 50 and 31 is going to be the low. High of 52 on Monday, a low of 32. Tuesday, we're looking at a low of 30 and a high of 52. And Wednesday is a high of 50 and a low of 30. And I'm over here now. October, according to the Spokesman, Spokesman Review, last month was the coldest on record in the city of Spokane with an average temperature of 42.3 degrees. This beat out 1905's record, which was an average of 42.8 degrees. Looks like it's not gonna get warm any warmer this month. According to timeanddate.com, Spokane's average temp in November 2018 was 38 degrees Fahrenheit. After the break, how two, people love, loves for the, two people's love for the community brought a new business to the Palouse when we're on News 8 returns. The WSU men's basketball season begins tonight. Learn about the fresh start at Beasley Coliseum. And how voting results from this week could affect your roads. Murrow News 8 starts now. From the Northwest Public... Good evening, I'm Corbin White. And I'm Malou Santos. Welcome to Murrow News 8. According to CNN, President Donald Trump must pay a $2 million fine to a group of nonprofit organizations. The Trump Foundation, which is headed by Trump's family, allegedly coordinated with his 2016 presidential campaign. The New York judge, Justice Salian Scarpula, uh, was in charge of that. That ordered Trump to pay the fine considered banning Trump and his children from serving on the boards of New York nonprofit organizations. Scarpula later declined to do so. According to Como News, Washington state voters have passed a law lowering the cost of vehicle tabs to $30. Local government, government is now scrambling for a new way to pay for road paving, light rail, and other projects. Como says uh, uh, car tab fees go to traffic, traffic enforcement and ferry operations. More than 60 cities have similar fees. A common study practice among students at WSU may be in violation of the university's academic integrity policy. Reporter Andrew Baderlin explains the practice and why it can be considered to be against the school rules. WSU Associate Athletic Director is retiring after 18 years of working at the university. Jerry Pastor was helping athletics, mental health, and he developed a student athlete wellness handbook with athletic director director Pat Chun and senior associate athletic, athletic director Brian Blair. Pastor also has been a part of the mental health curriculum for students, student athletes called behind happy faces and a student athlete advisory committee. It's the start of a new era for the WSU's men's basketball team. Find out what you can expect this season when Murrow News 8 returns. When we come back, we'll tell you about the air stagnation advisory that's in effect in some parts of Washington. John Lee will tell us what's in the forecast when Murrow News 8 returns. 
Welcome back to Morrow News 8. We have John over at the Weather Center. John, the weather has been nice lately, but how long can we expect this to stick around? Well, we'll be back after the break. Good evening, I'm Corbin White, and now it's time for your sports update. Team USA failed to qualify for the 2020 Summer Olympics their first time around. The American team lost against Mexi Mexico Sunday at the World Baseball Softball Confederation Premier 12 Tournament. According to CBSSports.com, the USA, USA team has a second shot at joining the Olympics at America's qualifying tournament in Arizona. If that doesn't go their way, Team USA will have another chance in Taiwan's final qualifying tournament. Kyle Busch walked off the Homestead Miami Speedway Sunday, a NASCAR champion. According to USA Today, Busch won the Ford EcoBoost 400, making him a two-time cup holder. Bush beat out runner-up Martin Truex Jr., Kevin Harvick, and Joe Gibbs, racing teammate Denny Hamlin. Bush celebrated his, his, celebrated his win with a burnout on the 1.5-mile track. He also took his four-year-old son, Brexton, for a victory lap. WSU's, WSU's women's volleyball team is on their way to a much warmer part of the country. According to, according to WSU Athletics, a WSU, WSU is playing the Arizona Sun Devils Thursday at 6 p.m. and the Arizona State Wildcats Sunday at 11, 11 a.m. According to N, NCAA.com, the WSU volleyball team is ranked 22. The Sun Devils and the Wildcats are not in the top 25. WSU's men's basketball team is playing University of Nebraska's Omaha Mavericks at home Thursday. According to WSU Athletics, this will be the first game ever between the two teams. The men's basketball team beat the Idaho State Bengals Sunday, 72-61. WSU has won all their games at home this season. The Omaha Mavericks had two wins and two losses. An update on, on MLB's sign signaling scandal. ESPN reports that MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred says punishments could be severe for the Houston Astros. MLB is currently investigating the Astros' alleged use of technology to steal pitching signs during their 2017 championship season. Manfred, Manfred says he hopes the investigation wraps up before the 2020 season begins next spring.